set time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. It's okay. We are going to listen to our brother uh, Ezekiel Bimba come to direct the testimony we shall hear today. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to the Lord for his goodness and revelation to guide us. Well, um, Pastor Ezekiel Bimba to say from Sierra Leone, Holiness Giver of Women, Coordinator of Sierra Leone. We are privileged by the grace of God to receive a revelation from our sister, Sister Frances Findan Gauja, the Sierra Leonean. She's a student at IPAM in Sierra Leone and currently also is a volunteer worker at Call to business. And um, this sister, by the grace of God, I've known her to be very faithful in the Lord committed. This is a fulfillment of the scripture. And I believe she's speaking the truth, and we have got a lot of challenges, blessings, testimony behind this. The word of the Lord told us in Revelation 119. Um, it said, Write these things with our sin and the things which are. And the things which shall be hereafter. When the Lord gave John the beloved revelation. He told him to document it. Because the scripture says. What I speak to one. I speak to all. And since our sister has got this. Is bringing this presentation. On behalf of. To the glory of God. From the holiness of our movement. Sierra Leone. Free town chapter. Amen. Help me praise the Lord and worship the Lord. Give clap to Jesus as we invite Sister Frances Finda Gauja to the podium to testify of what the Lord told her in a dream about the soon coming event of the rapture and the event after. God bless you. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody, and good morning to my elders also. I'm privileged to be here because I never expected God would do this in my life. But since he's the God I use it, everything you want to use, I have no other opportunity, I have no other thing to do other than to follow God's word. Amen. Um, just as my pastor has said, I'm a youth. I was born in 1990, up to now, I believe by God's grace, I'm 22 years old, and I've been with Jesus since I was 15. I gave my life to Christ since I was 15 years old, and I'm an orphan physically, because spiritually and otherwise, I'm not an orphan, but I've lost my parent since I was seven, I lost my father, and when I was 11, I lost my mother. But by the grace of God, God has taken me through without no pain or with pain and joy. Amen. On Tuesday, the 24th 
saw him, my voice and the prayer and everything. The 24th of July, 2012, I came from workplace around 6 to 7 in the evening. But I was very tired. On that day, I did not even study the Bible as I used to do. Neither do I pray fervently. I was very, very tired and I was hungry also. And I had to prepare food before I sleep. So I went to the kitchen, make my food, eat, and then went to rest. It was about 11, 10 to 11, but I did not know the actual time. I went to sleep. When it started, I don't know. I saw myself watching in the revolution. I saw myself watching a sort of musical show over the television. But this show that was on the television, they were singing songs, but these songs were mocking Christians. They were insulting God. They were provoking Christians. And they were young people. They carried a mark on their forehead. And they were wearing black garment and was fearful. So to myself, I said, I'm a Christian. I can't watch this kind of music that they are mocking God, provoking Christians. I decided to turn off the TV and in the revelation, decided to go to sleep. But immediately, I reached my hand for the television. I saw myself in a large crowd. A crowd that does not have any ending. Where I was standing was not far enough from the altar and was so far, so far from the crowd because it does not have any ending. The place was so dark. As you see this Bible, this color of black, it was so dark that you cannot recognize somebody except God wants you to. But everybody was busy crying, busy regretting. You will see how people regret because they have missed the rapture. And the rapture took place when people were busy enjoying themselves. Just as the Bible said that Christ will come as a thief. In the time when we don't expect, in the time that will be given to marry, enjoying, partying, that's the time Christ will come. So it happens. People were busy doing their own business, partying, marrying, doing whatever happy things that give them, make them happy. The rapture took place at that time. I saw myself among this crowd at the center. And a man that I know, but I cannot remember, who knew me very well, called out my name and said, I want you to take this document to the former place you are working. I said, okay, sir. He was sitting down. And when I took the document from his hand, he was laughing at the same time, crying. And then I said to him, you asked me to do you a favor. Now I'm about to do it. You are crying and laughing. What is the problem? What is happening? He, sh he nodded his head and looked at me in my eye and said, now I know you did not realize that you have missed the rapture. When he said that word, when he said that word that now I know you have not realized that you have missed the rapture, the shock the fear, the pain that have grip over me, I begin to cry. I begin to cry. I begin to cry. I drop the document on the ground and then I turn around, turn left to look at the number of people. But I can never count the number of people. And most of these people, we are young people. We are youth. We are young people. I saw different color, different race, different tribe, Different age, educated, non-educated, rich, poor, fear, black, every color. Different languages. But on that day, we all have only one language. Somebody will be speaking Yoruba, somebody will be speaking Chinese, English, Creole. But whatever you said, another person will hear you. They will hear you clearly as if we have no difference in language. So to my surprise, I asked them, I said, what are you people doing here? With tears on my eyes, with cry, with pain, with regret. I said, what are you people doing? What is happening? Somebody responded to me that said, I cannot remember clearly whether it was a man or a woman. And said, we are waiting on the preacher man. To me, I thought it was a pastor. 
I thought it was somebody who can tell us about Jesus. But to my surprise, when I turned, it was the devil himself. He has his own altar. The pulpit was as big that everybody can hear and see him in that large crowd. Whatever he is saying or doing, I was in front of the altar. After him, I was the next person. That how I will see him clearly. And as I'm speaking now, his face is continually in my image, in my, in my thoughts. And when he comes to the pulpit, he was mocking us. He will laugh. And whenever he laughs, it's like they are turning acid into your system. It's that turning acid into your flesh, into your body, into everything. Because you will feel the pain. You will feel the regret. You become clear of everything you have done. He will laugh. He was so happy because he has won the population he wanted to won. He will say to us, is this the Jesus you serve? Is this the Jesus you said you love? And after he said that word, people will cry. Christians will cry the more. Unbelievers will cry. Rich, poor, all kind of category, pastors, elders, you name it, born again Christians, you just give the name, all of us be there. And we will cry. He was so happy. His appearance, he was wearing a black and red garment, a big one, but he was fierce. He was fierce. Amen. On this time, God opened my eyes and I saw myself in a tent with the devil. The tent of the devil was as big as the world. And the crowd of the people is like we are all in a playing field. There is no boundary like we have mountains now that will separate us. Water, um, line. There was no line, no boundary. We were all just in one field. We were all together. And I was this, after the devil, I was the second person that would see him. So God opened my eyes in his tent. I saw him sitting in the center of all those that were around him. Large crowd of people. And then I asked him, each of these people carry the mark on their forehead. You can see it as bold as clear. It was marked with black. I paint or color, but it was marked with black in the flesh. You can see it clearly, boldly. Before you saw their faces, it's the mark that you foresee. And all of these people around him carry this mark. So I was standing close to him, right to him, while he had some agents around him that we rub his skin, that we play with him, that we are lying under his feet. These, some of them were young, some of them were old, some of them were all kind of age, all kind of race were around him. So I stood there with pain, with tears, with regret. And then I said, I said, devil, who are these people? Anytime I ask him questions before he responds, he will laugh. He will laugh. He will laugh. He will laugh until he is satisfied before he answered me. And whenever he laughs, whenever he laughs, there is pain, there is regret, there is remembrance of everything that you did on this earth. And he said unto me, after he finished laughing, these are my agents. He said, these are my agents. These are the people that I send into the world to corrupt the world. These are the people that I send into the world to deceive the world. To my surprise, I was puzzled. I was like, I, was, I don't have what to say other than to ask another question. The first category of people that I saw was ageable women. I asked him, I said, Satan, who are these women? Before he answered, he will laugh. He will laugh. He was so happy. He was so happy. You could see the happiness in his face, in his mood. And then he said, these are the fake pastor's wife that I sent to the world. To my surprise, imagine how we, how we fear our leader's wife. How we honor them. How we respect them. Lo and behold, most of them, some of them, we are agents from the devil. He said, these are fake pastor's wife. I, I begin to cry fresh. He said, I send them to the world. They will pretend as if they are holy. They will pretend as if they know Jesus. 
but they will manipulate the church and bring many to my kingdom. As he was saying this to me, one of the women stood up with a mark on his forehead with a clothes that just stopped on her chest. And then she went to one of the pastor that while on this earth have a church, a big ministry, married her. I saw her going to the pastor, going around the pastor, walking in a seductive manner, mocking the pastors and saying, Pastor, Pastor, while the man of God was carrying his Bible to his chest, squeezing it with tears, he was crying, he was deep regret. But the Bible does not have any effect. It does not have any effect. Today, if you squeeze the Bible to your chest, it's as if you are closer with Jesus. If you squeeze the Bible to your chest, it's as if you are reading the Bible. But what I saw that day, when the man of God was squeezing it to his chest, when he was crying, when he was in pain, the Bible has no effect. The Bible was big, was bold, but it has no effect. And the agent was rounding him, touching his head, his body, and saying, Pastor, Pastor. And she laughed, and she laughed. And she went back to her sitting under the devil. And I saw another category of people. These people were young people. Young age, young age, like my age, 18, 19, but all of them were young. A large agent, a large crowd of agents on the side of the devil. And then I asked him, I said, devil, who are these young people? Who are this category of people? He laughed. He laughed. He laughed. He was happy. And he said, these are my young agents that I send into the world to confuse the world. To get the mind of young people away from Jesus. To get them away from being focused. And as he was saying this. A young agent that was a woman, a sister, she stood up and then she was wearing tight. This tight that is now available, that is so cheap and can be anywhere. She was wearing a black tight, long one. She was wearing a vest, one strap vest and her breast was outside. And she was wearing jewelries, a long chain that is lapped in between her breast. She was wearing earrings. She was wearing bangles, bracelets. She has nails, these false nails that the worldly people use, do in their fingers with all kinds of decorations. She has leaf gloss, colored one. She has um, this eyeshadow. She, she has bevorn on her head and she stood up. She was so beautiful that even me as a woman, I get attracted when she stood up. Because she was so beautiful, her skin was shining. She, she looked attractive. She can captivate the mind of many. And when she stood up, she was walking in a seductive manner. A seductive manner. Her waist was rolling, her body, everything about her. She did it so well. And as she was doing it, everything about her changed. Dwellish changes, short ears, long ones, lip gloss changes. But it's the same makeup. It's the same thing. And then the devil said, I use these things to confuse the world. I use this thing to deceive Christians. I make them feel that they are Christians while they put on this thing. Lo and behold, they are not Christians. He said, I use this girl to seduce the boys in the church. I use the boys. I also saw a brother. He was wearing jeans trousers with belts. This belt has this skeleton head in front. And then this girl walked to one of the brother. He seduce and make him to miss rapture he went to the brother and and begin to mesmerize the brother walking in a seductive manner and he was touching the brother rubbing her hand over the brother but the brother was busy crying the brother was busy crying that he has missed rapture he was busy crying that he has missed rapture and then she went back to her seat under the devil and then i saw another category of ageable men I said to the devil, who are these category of people? Who are these people? And then he said unto me, these people, we laughed. He laughed with joy and said, these are my fake pastors. He said, these are my fake pastors. To my surprise, I was cold. I was so cold that I can feel the pain, the heat, and the coldness, and the surprise, and the shock of being deceived of men of God today. He said, these are my fake pastors. He said, I send them into the world to be churches, 
to water down the real doctrine. He said, I made them to talk about prosperity. I made them to forget holiness. He said, I made them to do whatever I tell them to do, but they will not preach the right doctrine. They watered it down. They watered it down. And he was saying this, as he was saying this to me, as he was saying this to me, a man stood up with a Bible in his hand. To me, I thought evil people cannot carry Bible. But on that day, he stood up with a big Bible in his hand. And I saw a large church, a crowd, a congregation that he was leading while he was upon this earth. He was preaching to them, you will be rich. You will be this. He will tell them you have money. He will not even tell them about sin or holiness or anything that concerns judgment. He was just busy telling them, you will be rich, you have money. And the people that were under his congregation on that day were saying amen, but were crying. They were saying amen. They were saying amen. As I'm talking it, I'm saying it. They were saying amen and they were crying. He showed how he preached to the people and then he returned to his seat. When he was going to his seat, he looked at me and laughed. He looked at me and laughed and went with his Bible. It was written there boldly, Holy Bible, to his seat to the devil. And then I turned. This, this, this other category that I saw, they were all ages. Young, big, rich, poor, educated. And I asked him, I said, who are these category of people? He said, these are the people that sing songs to praise me. But when they were in the world, people think they were singing for fun. He said, all the songs that they sing that does not glorify God, they were singing praises to me. I was like, Jesus, have mercy. But on that day, even if you call the name of Jesus as loud as you can, it will have no effect. There was no sign of Jesus. There was no sign of mercy. There was no sign of repentance. There was no sign of anything that we have now. There was no sign of grace. There was no sign of light. Not even a single light. Not even a, a touch light. A, not, no light. All you will see is pain, is regret, is mourn. People will cry. People will regret. People will... People, they will grind their teeth. They will be in, you will see them in terrible pain. You will know that I have missed the rapture. God took me again to another place. In the same place, in the same gathering. Where I saw people over the internet. But these people were not black at all. I did not see any black people among this place. Among this gathering that God took me. They, were, they look like Koreans, Japanese, Chinese. They have this look. And most of them were young people. They were sitting in front of computers. You name it. HPD, laptop, soft touch, all the touches. They were sitting in front of it. Machines, photocopier, every machine that is of technology today. They were having it in their hands. Some of them were sitting in front of it. And then when I reached this place, to my surprise, I thought I cannot speak their language because I've never been to their places. But to my surprise, when I asked, I said, why didn't you people make the rapture? One of their leader, I don't know, as if it were their teacher or the head, he stood up and said, we missed the rapture. I was shocked to hear a Japanese talk a language that I can hear clearly. And he said, we missed the rapture because of internet. I was like, what does internet have to do with Bible? What does internet have to do with rapture? Because for me, I never knew internet has anything to do with Bible. He said, we missed the rapture because of internet. I was shocked. I began to cry fresh. I begin, in that, on that day, you will cry as if you have never cried before. Tears will come down your eyes continually as if they are pumping water into your system. Because of the pain, because of the regret. I begin to cry. I begin to cry. I stood. I squeezed my hands together. And then he said, he was like this, in regret. We missed the rapture because of internet. And then I asked him, I said, how? What? How? When? He said, we are Christians. All of us. The youth were not able to talk to me. They were just in disdain, in regret. Some were bowing down their heads. Some were crying. Some were on the laptop, but was they have this kind of look that indeed we have missed the rapture. It was the Holy One talking to me. And then he said, we are Christians. He said, but what we do when we go over the internet 
does not behave, does not look like being a Christian. I said, how? He said, over Facebook, the pictures we post. He said, we, we have naked pictures. He said, the things we do, the places we go, he said, we post them over the internet. He said, the messages we send over the internet. He said, we don't send Christian messages. He said, the words that we said, he said, over Google. He said, what we type to look for over Google is nothing but Christian. We look for pornographic things. We look for blues. We watch blues movies. It's, some of them were playing games. I said, game? What does game have to do with rapture? Ordinary game. He said, the type of game. He said, we are playing games. And as he was saying it, saying it, I saw another youth with phone, this soft church phone. He was playing game. But immediately he missed the rapture. His finger was just on the phone, but he, the phone was showing that he was playing game. And then he said, this is why we missed rapture. I was, Jesus, God. So your eyes, so your eyes is still through internet. So you know everything that is done in internet. I was like, Jesus, I have mercy. But there was no sign of mercy. There was no sign of forgiveness. No, nothing at all that will show you light. It was just darkness. Just darkness. Immediately, I left one place. I cannot see that place again. Because of the darkness. Because of the darkness. God showed me a boy, a child, around the age of six to eight years of age. He was standing do is his hands like this in regret that he has missed the rapture. I was shocked. What does a kid around six to eight years know about rapture? What sin has he committed? Because in this world, to me, I think children at that age doesn't have any judgment. Before now, I was shocked. He was crying. I have missed the rapture. I have missed the rapture. He was standing. He was standing in between two distance. And I was the other side. On the other side, he was empty, but he was stood in front of, in that middle of that place. And then I was about to take this boy. To my surprise, I saw a man of God. A man of God that before, I looked him as a mentor. I looked him the kind of crowd, the kind of way people honor him. And this man of God, as I'm talking now, I'm seeing him clearly in the revelation. His name is ben Him. People honor this man. People fear this man. He was on the other side of the boy, trying to take the boy. When I saw him, I forget about the child. I, I was shocked. And I said, you? 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 How come you did not make the rapture? How come? What happened? What do you do that you did not make the rapture? With confidence, with smile, with laughter in his face. He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. I said, you don't know of what does it make you miss the rapture? He said, he was shaking his head like this. He said, I don't know. But he was, he was laughing. He was laughing. He was prepared for the pain. He said, I don't know. By the time we were talking, we were, in, we were close to the boy. We, both of us wanted to grab the boy. We saw the devil turning himself into a fake lion. The reason why the devil turned himself into the fake lion in this revelation, I'm still seeing it. Is that there are two categories of people. This category of people, those, these ones that said they still love Jesus, they will immediately cast them for punishment. The other category of people that said we can no longer be for Jesus, they will immediately give them the mark and they will become more evil, more wicked than those agents that we are with the devil. You will see somebody with the murder. Immediately, she or he said, I don't want to be with Jesus again. Receive the mark. We begin to punish the mother. He will punish the mother. He will do all kinds of things. They will become more wicked. They will become more happy. When you have the mark of 666, they will give you everything you want. But when you don't have that mark, when you don't have that mark and still believe in Jesus, they will punish you terribly. They will punish you terribly. And whenever the devil asks the people, do you still believe in Jesus? When they respond yes, he will turn himself into a fake lion, a big lion, fierce. But his poses we are so sharp that when he is angry, when he pierces the stone, this big iron stone works like mountain. It will be like ordinary dust. It 
it will just be like because of his hunger. And by that, he will inflict fear upon the people. And most people will say, we don't believe in Jesus again. While we were about to take this boy, the devil took the boy on his back and, put, and placed him on his back and said, my son. While he was saying my son, the boy was busy crying. He was saying my son, but the boy was busy crying. And I saw him. As I'm saying it now, I'm still seeing it. He took the boy to the place where they were punishing people. Where they were punishing people. We, where we were was dark and darker. But the place where they punished people was more darker than the place where we were. They, they, torture, they torture men as if men were animals. I saw it with my eyes. God took me to the place where they will punish these people. And then I will see they will take, they have all kinds of instruments for punishment. They have sharp they have the one to burst the skin. All kinds of category. They have red iron that is hot from a fire. You will see the iron as orange. It's not even red. It's orange. The blazing of the fire. You will see the iron red. They will use it upon the skin of mortals. I saw the devil. It will start from the, from the starting of this nail. From the fingernails. He will start to, to, to clean the flesh. The first skin of the flesh. He will begin to clean he begin to clean. He begin to clean until the foreskin, the foreskin, the red skin remains all over your body from the crown, from your head to your to your soul under your feet. He will skin us. He will skin them. He will skin them. And after skinning, he will use sharp instrument as if as if like needle. He begin to bust that skin little by little. And while they are doing this, he will ask you, "Do you still love Jesus?" Do you still believe in Jesus? If you said no, your whole body will become normal and you will receive the mark. But if you said yes, if you said yes, oh, brethren, they will continue. They will be continue. They will continue. They will continue piercing yourself. They will continue making you as if. They will continue. They will continue. They will continue to pierce you. After they have done piercing you, after they have done, after they have done doing what they want to do to you, and then they will use something like whip. It is made with mental. This whip has tons. It has inches. And then it will, they, will, they will use it to whip this boss skin. And if you see blood, we gushed out from human skin. I was kind. I was kind. I was kind. And I was still kind. I was, I was, I was in pain. I'm still in pain. To see how people will punish because they did not make the rapture and because they believe in Jesus. I was crying. I was in pain. I'm still in pain. As I'm saying it, I feel the pain. I'm still feeling the pain. How the tortured men as animal because they believe in Jesus because they did not make the rapture because they believe in Jesus. Tortured. You will see some 
maggots are coming out of their body because when they torture you today, they will keep you so that you will be rotting, so that you will smell, so that you will feel the pain. And after some time, they will come back for you. There are some people, they will torture you until your skeleton remains, but your skeleton will still be alive. Your skeleton will go through torture. Your skeleton will go through pain. They will punish you. They will punish you until you yourself know indeed, Jesus so far from me. I saw in this prison, skeletons were alive, but they were crying. You will see tears coming down from ordinary skeleton. I mean skeleton. They were crying for Jesus. They will punish them. They will punish them. They will come into the prison. With all that punishment, there is no food. There is no water. You will suffer. You will suffer. You will suffer. And then, I saw death with my own eyes. I was shocked to see that he is tall. He is thin. He has this fierce look as, as if as if he's somebody who has lived a thousand years in hell. He has this fierce look. It is not easy for somebody to see the face because he covered his face. But when you look through, by the grace of God, he showed me his face. He was fierce. He was fierce. His eyes were inside. Imagine death that will come and take anybody now because he wants to take them to hell. On that day, death will only come when he feel pleases. Death come when he feel that you are being tortured. To the point that you are ready now to die. He will come and take you. And brethren, he will only take one, two. The highest number is three. He will not go above that. Imagine death that is taking thousands of people now. That is taking billions of people on the day of rapture. We only take one, two, or three. And we will not go above that figure. He will dare not go above that figure. And we take them. To death and we take them to death but the punishment was so great the punishment was so great in this time i saw my own biological brother i saw him he was sitting in regret he did not make rapture but we were unable to talk because he was in pain he was just shaking his head like this and was unable to talk to me he looked at me but unable to talk to me i did not ask him any question and as I took another step on the same crowd, in the same crowd, I saw my cousin. His name is Francis. And then he was, he was in shock. He was surprised, but was unable to talk to me. But I was unable to talk to me. Everybody who said they no longer believe in Jesus will receive the mark. Everybody who said they no longer believe in Jesus, they will receive the mark. I saw my brother, I saw my cousin, I saw myself. I saw a man of God who was preaching using the internet. He has his laptop on his feet. He was a black man of God. He was black. He was wearing coat and was having a big Bible in his hand. On the other side, and on his lap, he was carrying a laptop. He was preaching through the laptop. He was using internet to preach. Every day he will send messages. Every day he will send messages. But he did not make the rapture. I was shocked. Because to us, it is good to preach through the internet. To us, it is good that people will see messages through the internet. But lo and behold, when I asked him, I said, man of God, why didn't you make the rapture? He said to me, because I used the internet to preach. I said, what? But you are preaching through the internet. He said, that is not one of the reasons. He said, the main reason is that I was ashamed to carry the Bible physically. I was ashamed to tell people about Jesus physically. So, before I saw it as a way that I can only use the internet. Where people will not see my face. They will not know it's me talking. But I will preach to them. I was ashamed of carrying the Bible. On that day, he has a bigger Bible. He has a big Bible. But the Bible was of no effect. The machine won us, won us his lap. He was sitting with it on his lap. Amen. I saw a pastor. I don't know his name, but I can remember his face. If I see him today, I will tell him that I saw you on that day. You did not make rapture. He was a man of God. He held his Bible. And then I asked him, I said, why didn't you make the rapture? He said, because I preach false doctrine. 
He said, because I did not really preach about Jesus. Because I did not really tell the people about sin and righteousness. I saw people who give heed to false doctrine. They were not the one preaching it. They were not the one evangelizing it. But I saw them. But I saw them. Because of the just listen to false doctrine and give it and practice it, they miss the rapture. In this world, we say it's our pastor, it's our leaders, it's our this, but on that day, they will not ask you who. They will torture you because you did not make rapture. I was shocked. These people do not know anything. These people do not preach anything. They just listen and believe. But yes, still, they did not make rapture. Amen. I saw the category of people. When the devil is ready to punish people, he will punish them in three. The chain that I saw, I've never seen it on this earth. When they use the chain to grab your body, to chain you people together as if you are slave, drag to the place of punishment, the chain will go right to your skin. The chain will go right into your skin. We have a grip of you into your skin. In trees, they will tie you together dragging you because people doesn't want to go to the place of punishment but they will drag them they will drag them they will cry they will hold the ground but they will drag them they will pull them with force and i saw the devil punishing men before women if he's taking the women he will take one two but the men he will take them he will take them he will take them he will take them so i asked him i said satan why are you taking men before the women and then he looked at me and laughed he laughed he laughed. He laughed. And then said, yes. Because the women are weaker vessels. By the time I finished dealing with the men, all these women should have given heed unto me. And then, exactly as he said, before he finished with the men, the percentage of women who has turned to the devil, compared to those of us who still believe in Jesus, was, it, was, it was one or three to hundred. If you see the population of women, they are forgetting about Jesus. I saw myself with a pregnant woman and another young lady, the three of us. We were standing in front of the devil, but I was the one asking him question. I said, devil, why are you so wicked? Why are you so wicked? He was laughing. He was happy. He was joyous that he has done this. On that time, I saw the devil in the real form. As the Bible said, God used all precious things to make the devil. Yes, brethren, it is true. The devil is so beautiful. That is why he can attract anybody. The devil is so beautiful. That is why when he speaks, people think they are listening to the right voice. The devil is so beautiful. The devil is so beautiful. If you see his skin, if, like, like milk, like butter color, he has this, this he's so clean. He's guilty like diamond. He's guilt in matching the devil. But when he wants to do something that is evil, when he wants to do something bad, he will transform himself into anything he wants to do. He will transform himself into anything he wants to do. He will torture people. He will do all kinds of things. And then, so the reasons why people made hell, why did not make the rapture? I have to ask him. I said, Satan, why is it that people do not make rapture? He laughed. He laughed. And then he said, unforgiveness, secret sin, all kinds of things he began to name. And then I said, wait, why didn't I, why me, me, did not make the rapture because I'm a Christian? He looked at me and he looked at me and he was like saying to me while he was doing his head, did you think I don't know? He said, you come, you did not make the rapture because of unforgiveness. I said, me? He said, yes. And as he said the word, I remember clearly when my pastor my father, because my biological parents have lost them, but there was a man of God who took me like his child. He loved me so much. He would correct me. He would train me. He, he was the first person that preached to me. I gave my life to Christ. But later, one day, he was angry with me. I don't know what exactly I do, but later he said, because my spiritual life was not strong, he was angry with me. He said something was wrong with my spiritual life, and he was unable to talk to me. Because he has cancelled me several times. So he was angry with me. He was angry with me. And then he had to say to me in his own house. He said, leave my house. Imagine an orphan with the pain in the wound in my heart that I have. How people have treated me bad. 
how they have molested us, how they have deceived us. And then the only person I have trust in at that time said to me, leave my house, you are no longer my child. In my heart, I, I become more, more wounded. I become more wounded that nobody again can tell me that you are, a ch you are my child than I believe. I said, I will never, never forgive him for what he has done. But yet, I went down on my knee. I begged him. I was crying at his feet. But in my heart, I never forgive him. Until after I have this revelation, I forgive him totally. Now I can call him father again. I can talk to him with peace, with clearness in my heart. The devil said to me, you never forgive the man of God. That is why you are here. And then I said, is that all? He said, no. You are in secret sin. I said, me in secret sin? He said, yes. I said, how? As I was asking how, I remember clearly, while I'm in this earth, before God showed me the rapture, I was in courtship with a brother in the church. The courtship was from God. Before him, it, it, was, it was not him that met me that he wanted to marry me. It was the church committee that asked me to pray. And when I pray, I saw him. I tell our pastor, and our pastor said, yes, this is the brother that asked you. It's not that he was the one. It, everything was going orderly before we begin to think that since they have not yet announced the courtship in church to anybody, but because they have told us, the two of us, that we can be praying, they begin to counsel us to ourselves. We think now we are husband and wife. We begin to call each other. We send messages to each other. I visited him at night. He visited my house at night. And we continued doing this until we committed fornication several times. After I have this revelation, the devil said, you miss rapture because of secret sin. To so myself, I said, what will secret sin count compared to the punishment that I have seen? Compared to the law of God I have to me to correct me now? I said, it's better I go and report myself. I called him. I said, this is what I have seen in the dream. In, in Revelation, he too, that very night, he went to the pastor and began to confess. The other day, I went to my pastor and began to tell my pastor. My pastor was so disappointed. But after we said everything, he himself began to cry that God should correct him. And we, they take us to the church committee. They punish us and they ban the, the courtship. And after, I'm still praying because our pastor said we can continue after the punishment, the suspension and this. But for me, I'm still praying, and he, we are still praying to ask God if we should continue. It is better I don't marry or have a broken courtship now than I miss heaven. Compared to what I saw, compared to what I saw, it is better. It is better I lose him now. It is better I lose everything now than I lose heaven. Compared to what I saw that day, compared to how God corrected me. And the devil said, you also miss rapture because of stealing. I said, me. How can I steal? What is it that is so big to me? Because I grew up this way. Anything you steal, my mother will beat you until she wants to kill you. So besides spirituality, I have that training. The devil said, yes, you are stealing. I said, how? As he was saying it, I remember the office where I'm working voluntarily now. I'm a cashier. We sell items. People buy items from us. A big office. I control the money. On, after, the working, after the end of the working day, they will calculate one after the other all the items we sell. And the money will be correct. I've never for one lost any money. But sometimes people will leave their change. Like 100 million in our currency, 50 million. And if you sum up to a huge amount of money, instead of me giving the business that this is your money because it's not mine, I thought it was mine. I thought since I'm the cashier, every change that people will give, every change, it's not the one they will give me, say, take. It's the one that they will left and say, okay, since there is no change, no problem. It was because it was the office money. So me, I thought it's my money. The devil said, you are, you, we are stealing. I said, he said, you are stealing. So God showed me that this money that I was taking, busy using for myself, take transportation out of people's money, it's not my money. And because of that, I missed rapture. I, I cried. I cried. I I don't have any way to defend myself because everything he said is true. I cried. I cried. And then I said, what of these other people? He did not talk to me again. He directed me to the crowd. I saw another man of God. I said, why didn't you make the rapture? He said, I don't know. I'm unconscious of my sin. Unconscious sin. Brethren, I tell you, many of those Christians who do not make rapture, we are unconscious of the sin they committed. They never knew what they did. They never knew at all. They would begin to ask, do I steal? Do I do this? 
But to, they, the answer will come, no. But they were unconscious. I was shocked. Unconscious sin. Unconscious sin. But I realized anything that has a name, a begin or end with sin, is sin. Whether it is unconscious, whether it's conscious, as long as it ends with sin, is sin. And then I saw another sister asked, I said, why are you here? Some people, a sister, a brother, they were conscious of their sin. Some did not go there because of fornication. Some did not go there because of the world. Some did not go there because of secret sin. And the devil himself told me, many of them do not make the rapture because they never serve God in truth and in sincerity. They were holy outside. They preached the true word of God. But in sincerity of heart, they never serve God. So that is why, that is why they missed the rapture. I begin to cry. I said, who then is qualified? Unconscious sin, unsincerity. How can you know you are sincere with God or you are not sincere? I begin to cry. I begin to cry. I say, God, have mercy. God, have mercy. But there is no sign of mercy. There is no sign of forgiveness. There is no sign of anything. There is no sign of Jesus. Now you call Jesus one, Jesus appear. You call Jesus one, he send you grace. You ask for mercy, freely given. On that day, nothing will show. We said God love us, God love us, God, God love us. God, God is a God of punishment. I saw, I saw darkness. People were busy punished, being punished. People were being punished. They cry for mercy, no mercy. Many, many of this crowd, many of this large crowd, we are young people. I'm repeatedly saying 99% or 75% among this crowd, we are young people. Many of them do not make the heaven, do not make rapture because of dressing. Some of them they will dress, but they use jewelries. Many of them, the devil said, I confuse them to have double mind. While they dress like this, they think they are Christian. They are not Christians. I told myself, I said, how can the devil tell me about Christian? Then I realized that the devil know more, more than how we know. He said, many of them, many of them who think they are Christian, they live a double life. When they are in church, they are holy. When they are outside, they are committing. Inside their heart, I believe, make them believe that they are Christian. He said, they are not. They will never be a Christian. Many of them, many of these people, many of these categories of people the devil was saying, missed the rapture. I saw youths who go to church wearing trousers, singing holy music, transforming Christian music to I saw lots of them do not make rapture because of that. I saw people. I saw all kinds of people, pastors, bishop, general overseer, sister in church, praise and worship team leader, you, you name it. Everybody, anyone who was not qualified missed rapture. They missed rapture. The devil mocked us continuously and said, is this the Jesus you serve? Is this the Jesus you said you love? When he was saying this, he would point at us with, like this. Is this the Jesus you said you serve? His voice was going clear, clear. And as his voice was going, you will see the pain. You will see the tears. Is this the Jesus you said you serve? Is this the Jesus you love? His voice was going clearly, clearly, clearly. And he will see us crying. 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 People who said they love Jesus, they were doing secret sin. People who said they love Jesus, they were lying. People say who said they love Jesus, they were not serving Jesus in truth and in sincerity with all the love they have for Jesus. The devil was mocking us. He was laughing. He was laughing. He was so happy. He was so happy. He has these people. He was so happy that he can do anything that he wants to do. I believe. I believe. God took me to the future. It's not that I'm special. It's not it's just because he loved me and because he loved you. He wants to correct us so that we will not miss rapture. So that we will not miss rapture. Since the day I have that revelation, up to today, up to the day Jesus will come, I continually walk. I continually walk. I continually look at my life. I continually look at my life. I continually walk. I continually walk. Every day and every time. As I'm saying now, I'm still praying. If God wants me to continue in that courtship. If God wants me, I'm going to quit. If God wants me, okay. 
And before this day, I've been praying. God, I will see God in a dream. Not that I will see his face. He will use this brother that we are in worship and doing this sin. The brother will come to me in a dream three times and say to me, let us stop this sin in a dream. Before God punish us, we never stopped. Before, after this revelation, I have a dream. I was praying, it's not a dream, a revelation, the voice of God saying to me, until I am satisfied, you people should be apart totally until I am satisfied. I said, God, until you are satisfied. If you satisfy when Jesus comes, satisfy. If you satisfy when we are raptured, so anytime you are satisfied, satisfy. I quit. I quit. I said, just satisfy. The church, they have announced it. In fact, because of that reason, because of that reason, when they want to go and meet my family, I have told my family members, my brothers and sisters, I, I'm so afraid. I said, please wait. Before you go and meet my family, and God said, I'm not satisfied. I said, Lord, Lord, don't go. Let's wait for God. We, we, church pastor said, call him, we talk. When we talk, anytime we talk, I will tell him about rapture. Every time we talk, I will tell him about rapture. He said, yes, I heard about rapture. I will not allow him to even begin to ask, do you go to college? I will just continue to talk about rapture. It is better God become satisfied than I lose my soul. When, in this dream, when I wake up, in this revelation, when I wake up, it was around 2 to 3 in the morning. Bef when I wake up, I was wearing a nightgown. The, the nightgown that I was wearing, the chest, in front of it, everywhere was wet with tears. Not knowing that while I was in the revelation, while my spirit was away, it was responding to my physical flesh that was lying on the bed. The, the, the canopy that I was covered with was so hot, was so hot, that when I wake up, when I wake up, I feel the heat as if, as if I was in a place where they were, where, where they were boiling me up, where they were cooking me up. I wake up. I was, I was unable to talk for about 15 minutes. I was just crying, Jesus have mercy. And at that time, I can feel that mercy is responding in my life. Because I was afraid that I'm already dead. I begin to cry, Jesus have mercy. I rolled on the ground. I took my phone and called other people, I called my pastor. I called as I was explaining. They said, God, it's write it down. And then I wrote it down. I have seen it. I have believed it. I'm living it. Because God loved me so much to correct me while I'm alive. To give me this opportunity to go and see the future. What should have happened with me? Imagine the devil said, you were in courtship. Maybe, so that is going to tell me that rapture is taking place any time now. He didn't say when you are in courtship. He said you are in courtship and you are in secret sin. I lived everything to God because I'm working every day. I'm not going back to anywhere until God says so. Since I have this revelation, I have several accidents. A Okada bike. I was taking a bike to my house. We have an accident. A big truck was coming. He decided to slide the truck. We fall over the gutter. The bike man fall on the right hand side and I fall on the left inside a gutter because they are constructing our road. The bike bounced and when it was coming down, it come on my side. The entire bike, I'm not telling about it, it come on my side. I, I was unable to talk. I just said, take the bike. Nobody will hear me when I was talking. I just said, take the bike. People want to hold me. In my heart, the word has just come to me. I'm not going to die until I fulfill the work of God. At that moment, I become strong again. No pain. I went home. I massage the side. I eat. I sleep. I studied. I wake up again in the morning to go to work. My friend who saw the thing that happened, when she saw me, she was like, feel I hear a witch? I said, no. God said, I'm not going to die until I fulfill his work in my life. The other day again, we were coming from workplace class. We are going home. The same bike. Because it's the only bike that runs in our way. I took this bike. We had accident. The Okada driver, his feet get broke. His feet was broke. You can see the nail outside. The bike was smashed. But me, the only thing that happened to me is that my sander was cut. I was okay. People were saying, what is this? You that should have been damaged inside my heart. I was just saying, I have confidence in you. Jesus I have confidence in you anytime, anywhere. I have confidence in you. 
Jehovah God. I took my sandal quietly and I was walking. The bike man said, let me take you to hospital because my toe was bruised. I said, eh, take yourself to the hospital because me. I have Jesus who is going to heal me. I reached home, they drew my feet, rub oil, and the other day, I was up again. Many things have happened. Electricity, this and that. But nothing has the enemy hurt me. Because I will not die. I will live and do the work of God. And I will live to make heaven. Hallelujah. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. Me, I don't see. Me, I see. Me, me, must go talk about the goodness of God. Me, I don't see. Me, I see. Me, me, must go talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen. My Heard my mouth we talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth we talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth we talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. My mouth we talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen my ears have heard. My mouth we talk about the goodness of God. Amen. We give God the praise. This is the goodness of the Lord. Warning is mercy before judgment. This is one of the greatest warning you can receive. One God we have had. It is one thing to hear. It's another thing to do the will of God. To be frank, few months a brother got a revelation. He saw me holding a young child going round, round the world. And the child was testifying about heaven and hell. But one thing the girl, the child said that the brother said he remembered in all what the lady, the child was saying, is that God has assigned an angel over hell to blow the fire of hell to be hotter than ever before. And we were in an all night. It was on Thursday night, so I kept troubling about this statement. Is it biblical? Can God increase the fire again? So on Friday, Saturday, the thought kept, thought kept coming. It was on Sunday morning I was preaching. Then the Lord thought came. He said, examine the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Can you see this scenario that is there? He said, when Nebuchadnezzar warned the children of Israel to bow to him, the Hebrews, they refused. And it was not, it was serious for him, for them to refuse Nebuchadnezzar as a war leader by that time. At Easter, they should have been killed. But mercy preceded. Nebuchadnezzar called them, said, now I'm giving you the second chance. If we blow this trumpet again, this last chance, can you imagine for them to have that privilege? We are going, and you refuse. In fact, they raised the phone seven times. Now that we have given you a unique privilege that we have not given others, if you refuse, we will send you to this fire. So after the message, I went to the other branch I was preaching. I knelt 
I knew that on my knees, I started telling the church what God said. That if we, this generation, with all this revelation, still follow the mistake of the previous generation, there is a special hell that will face higher judgments than them. Since that time, any time I hear a testimony like this, I cry more. I told God, I will never say I'm okay until that day you tell me I'm okay. God bless you. Thank you.